Today's episode, we're going to be talking about six reasons we are going into a recession and why your business needs a revenue rock star. Enjoy. Welcome to the Age of Jeremy. My name is Jeremy Cantini. I am the founder and CEO of Q Consolidated Limited. We focus on investing and creating businesses in media and entertainment, finance, investing, and insurance, education and e-learning, art, music, and the humanities, earth and human sustainability and advancement, and earth and space exploration and transportation. Some of our current businesses include 3T Warrior Academy, Q Financial, Age of Radio, and Merlin, the smartest way to track your crypto, to name a few. You can find me on all socials at Age of Jeremy, except on X, it is Age of Jeremy Q. And on Facebook, it is Cesar Jeremy Quintanilla. There are links in the episode description if you want to go and follow me, which I encourage you to because, well, they're my social media platforms or my social media Um, my social media profiles. If you are new to this podcast, this is all the trials and tribulations I go through to build my business empire. And I hope you pick up some wisdom along the way. I also have guests that share their trials and tribulations, becoming content creators and the adventures they have gone through to become entrepreneurs. If you want to see Coach JV's financial blueprint, there is a link in my link tree in the episode description. It is a warrior's guide to financial freedom, and it is absolutely free. Please also join my Q Consolidated channel and my Age of Jeremy Instagram account. I provide extra insight on all the things I am going through in business and in my life. Hopefully, hopefully you will find some wisdom in it as well. It is absolutely free to join. Also, make sure to check out ageofradio.com to see all of our amazing products. We will be adding more soon. You can also join our amazing um, I'm sorry, our amazing podcast, not our amazing products. Go to age of age of radio.com to see all of our amazing podcasts. We will be adding more soon. You can also join our amazing community of content consumers and content creators at our addicted to podcasting Facebook group. All are welcome. And the very last thing I am very happy to announce that Merlin, the smartest way to track your crypto is free to the public. Um, and we have added Uphold and Gemini exchanges to be able to automatically connect. Head on over to MerlinCrypto.com to start your free 30-day trial right now. That is MerlinCrypto.com. All right, let's dive in. So I am recording this on October 1st, 2023, and I just got back from New York. It was my first trip to New York, and it was a business trip, and I was absolutely ecstatic because we got to celebrate with Ripple and a lot of XRP influencers, including my best friend, Coach CJV, or Coach JV, I call him CJV. Uh, he was there. We did tons of pictures. We started taking pictures with people at the link to performance or link to get together. It was like a pre a pre launch. It was like a little, I don't know, um, a networking event with link to um, if you don't know what link to is head on over to link com. again. Uh, we're not sponsored by link to or at least I'm not sponsored by link to um, for this specific um, podcast. Um, we have done some sponsorships with him in the past for CJV and the 3T Warrior Academy, but this is not a sponsor on this podcast. Essentially, I went, um, if you go over to link to, they are trying to democratize the way in which people invest into private equity. Um, it is only to accredited investors for most of their stuff. However, they are starting to open up, open up Ripple to other, um, to non-accredited investors. Uh, and, and Ripple Labs is the business that's behind XRP. And they just got cleared of their lawsuit before an appeal happened. But essentially, the SEC deemed XRP not a security, which is a big win in the blockchain space because XRP has, or Ripple has some of the best technology, um, digital distributive ledger technology and foreign exchange market making um, in the business. And they have fantastic relationships with companies like Bank of America. I want to say MasterCard, American Express, maybe not MasterCard, American Express 100%. Uh, and also I read somewhere that uh, Microsoft Azure is partnering with them for something. Um, but that was from like a crypto news source. Um, I'm assuming it was a good, you know, a good credible um 
piece about it, but uh, I would go and research that some more, and I have not researched it prior to saying it on this podcast, other than the article that I found. So maybe I should have done that before I did that, but that's how it goes. Uh, and so we were in New York, uh, and the most exciting part about it was not only that me and CJV, uh, people knew who I was, people definitely know who CJV was uh, at the link to event, but we started taking pictures, or John started taking pictures of CJV at 3.30 in the afternoon on Friday, and he kept taking pictures and talking to fans until about 11 p.m. that evening, and then we went over to this place called TikTok, not the app. It's a restaurant on the corner of whatever corner I was on near um, uh, the Hammerstein Ballroom. And uh, we had uh, an amazing, amazing midnight breakfast, I suppose. It was fantastic. But also Ripple had a very special guest. They had Lenny Kravitz. And we were able to see him very, very close. Essentially, we could have just went up to the front of the stage if we wanted to. But um, I was helping with CJV. Brenda, our media person, it was her very first CD that she purchased was a Lenny Kravitz CD. That is one of her favorite artists. She was freaking ecstatic. And she definitely went up to the front to see Lenny Kravitz. It was amazing. If you go on my Facebook, you can see a picture that I have. I think I sent most of my videos to my wife. And then if you're in that huge consolidated channel i submitted some videos into there so people could see that lenny kravitz performance it was amazing i had a fantastic time we got to see some of our friends jenna uh, x crypto who was on our good morning crypto show if you don't watch our good morning crypto show it's on our three two war academy channel i know we have so much stuff going on it sounds like just one long advertisement on here but i assure you we have some other content coming for you uh and uh, i really enjoyed new york it wasn't uh, exactly what uh, I expected to be when we got into Times Square Square, it just reminded me of Las Vegas uh, and but not as dirty, I guess, maybe. I don't know. It was a lot cleaner than I thought it was. We actually stayed in Queens, which ended up I really enjoyed Queens and um, I really enjoyed Times Square. We had some Thai food. I went to the Nintendo store. I bought a bunch of plush. That was phenomenal. And oh, some cool Nintendo New York T-shirts. I really enjoyed that. And uh, it was just a fantastic time. It was me. Uh, CJV, Brenda, and Coach Jackie, who runs our crypto group and does some, she was a coach, Jackie, so she did coaching before, and she loves fitness and health, and so it was really, really good. Abdullah, Abdullah was Abdullah. Abs was there. Abs is going to get mad at me if he ever hears this. Johnny Crypto was there, uh, and we just had a fantastic time. I had to talk about Merlin with a lot of people, um, and I got to uh, talk and, and mingle with the link to people, especially because uh, I'm really excited because I'm going to talk to Joe, the owner of link to hopefully I didn't get a chance to while I was there, but I'm friends with him on Facebook or on LinkedIn. I'm going to reach out to him because I really want to work to be on their board uh, because I'm going to get back into some board work here. Uh, a lot of the things that I've been thinking about and doing have led to this podcast and me thinking about revenue officers getting better at management, thinking a lot about business, us getting much better at business, becoming more efficient uh, and, and running things even tighter as an organization, not as a corporation, as an organization. Um, but so I'm really excited about all of that. And I, and we had a blast and I really appreciate Ripple and I appreciate Link2 and all that they do for us. Also, I wanted to give you an update on some of the cool health and wellness stuff that I have picked up. I am wearing blue light blockers on my eyes right now. They are amazing. And if you don't know what blue light blockers are, they help block out the blue light rays from screens. And it's supposed to help with eye fatigue and eye strain. Uh, and that's something that I'm really focused on here, along with getting more into cold therapy and ice baths. Um, along with that cold therapy, I got uh, I have a Manta sleep mask. You should go get one of those. Again, not sponsored, but I love Manta sleep mask. And I bought the cooling um, the cooling pe the cooling eye pieces. So I froze them when I got home from the airport today because they were had come in the mail. I put them on, and my eyes feel so much better. Um, they feel so. Um, uh, the inf inflammation seems to have gone down. They're not so puffy. And so I'm going to try to do them in the morning, hopefully. Um, but again, I have, it's not an eye mask that I can see through because it's a man to sleep mask. So we'll see how that part goes, but I have them in my freezer right now so I can pop them on in the morning. So I'm really excited about that. And then, you know, we did our ice baths at the revive retreat 
which was amazing. And I'm still feeling like I'm revitalized from the revive and I'm revitalized from the ice bass. And I want to continue that. So I'm really going to focus on some of those areas of my health and wellness. Um, and I've been eating a lot more fruit. So I feel really good about that. Um, I'm always big on exercising. I mentioned that a lot. I love working out and I love martial arts. Um, and so I say that I love martial arts, but I don't actually actively do martial arts on a weekly basis, but I love working out and I do love martial arts if I could get more time to do it. Um, and so one of my things is eating better. Um, and some of those other wellness activities like meditation, doing more yoga. I've been doing yoga every Saturday. I have a hip and leg routine that I do. Um, and the only weekend that I haven't done it is this one. I did it while we were at revive after we did yoga and, um, eventually I'll get some content of me doing that leg workout. Um, I follow this guy named the movement journey, and then I, I mixed it in with some on it hip flexor workouts and uh, it's just fantastic. So really focusing on that wellness piece of it, because I feel that if we're well, we can be much more efficient. And again, the goal is to not only have a long and prosperous life, but to be and, and have an enjoyable life, but also be more efficient when we are working. So then that way we don't have to work so much and we're doing the most meaningful things and doing them, you know, the, the best that we can. Uh, and so I'm really focusing on that. And then, uh, I will take you along on that journey with me through different platforms. So make sure that you follow me because you will never know where a show is going to pop up. This show will always be here, but you'll never know where other shows are going to pop up. So make sure that you follow me. So let's talk about this recession. So why a U.S. recession is still likely and coming soon. This is from a Bloomberg's article that came out on October 1st by Anna Wong and Tom Orlick. When everyone expects a soft landing brace for impact, that's the lesson of recent economic history, and it's an, an uncomfortable one for the U.S. right now. A summer in which inflation trended lower, jobs remained plentiful, and consumers kept spending has bolstered confidence, not least at the Federal Reserve's. That's the world's biggest economy. Uh, that the world's biggest economy, which is ours, will will avoid a recession. And so we always say in, in the academy, if people are buying, then you should be selling. If people are selling, you should be buying. And that kind of goes along with this. Give me one second. I'm going to take a drink of this amazing Lipton Green Diet Green Tea Mixed Berry. Again, not sponsored. Just, I don't know, telling you all the stuff I've been doing. Okay, and so a last-minute deal to avoid a government shutdown kicks one immediate risk a little further into the future, but a major auto strike, the resumption of student loan repayments, which I started paying off my student loans, uh, and a shutdown that may yet come back after the stop-gap spending deal lapses could easily shave a percentage point off GDP growth in the fourth quarter. Sorry, I had a Discord um, uh, a thing come in, a Discord uh, notification. I'm talking to a gentleman about content creation on there. Uh, once you join our Addicted to Facebook group, you'll or you follow me on social medias, I'll eventually show you how to get into our a, uh, Age of Radio Discord, where we talk about content creation and just have a good time. Um, there's only 28 members in that. In the Addicted to Podcasting Facebook group, there are 550 people, so you should definitely join that one. Um, okay, so they have six things that say that a recession is looming in this Bloomberg article. And so the first one is an auto strike. So if you're not up to date, um, the United Auto Workers Union has called a walkout at America's big three auto firms. The first time they've all been targeted at the same time. It expanded the strike on Friday to encompass some 25,000 workers. The industry's long supply chain means stoppages can have an outsized impact. In 1998, a 54 day strike of 9,200 workers at GM triggered 150,000 drop in employment. So you have all of these people going on strike at the same time. Now, do I believe strikes are good? Absolutely. In the case of these, this specific thing, I think strikes are good because you can stop the production and you can get movement in your salaries. If you look at the um, correlation between labor union activity in the United States and the um, wages rising, there is a very strong positive correlation. And so as we have seen more unions um, being struck down and not being able to strike and not people not being involved with unions, we have also seen our, did I say an employment? I meant our, um, uh, if I, I, I didn't mean employment, if I said it, I meant our um, 
a minimum wage. You can see a correlation between that minimum wage dropping dropping, and the amount of people that are involved with laborers. Now, I think things like that are really good. There are other things, protests that I think are kind of like, I don't think people need to spend their time on. There's other activities that they could be doing that could be moving things forward. But when it comes to like the um, writer strike and the worker strike, I think this is very, very uh, impactful and it can move them forward. However, it can be detrimental to our um, economy and it could help push us into a recession because Lord knows we need a recession. We don't need, I mean, we need a recession to help get some of the stuff back under control, some of the stuff to reset because of the ridiculous um, amount of inflation and uh, the ridiculous amount of um, uh, inequality that we have. So we need something to help reset some of that stuff and hopefully level some of that out. Um, and then student bills is the second one they put in this Bloomberg article. Millions of Americans will start getting student loan bills again this month, which I already paid my first one go me after the three and a half year pandemic freeze expired to be honest with you i have not paid never have had to pay anything on any of my student loans i have not been in school for about 10 years um but i just started paying um the resumption of payments could shave off another 0.2 to 0.3 percent from annualized growth in the fourth quarter there is an oil spike a surge in crude prices hitting every household in the pocketbook is one of the handful of truly reliable indicators that a downturn is coming Oil prices have climbed nearly $25 from their summer lows, pushing about $95 a barrel. So if you've noticed, you probably feel it, it fucking sucks, but gas is going up. And so that oil spike can also help push us into a recession. Then there's also the yield curve. How many is that? One, two, three, four. There's six. I don't see the six one on here, but the yield curve. Uh, a September sell-off pushed the yield on 10-year treasuries to a 16-year high of 4.6%. Higher for longer borrowing costs have already tipped equity markets into decline. They could also put the housing recovery at risk and deeper companies from investing. And as that happens, that would push us into a recession as well. All right, global slump. The rest of the world could drag the U.S. down. China, the second biggest economy, is mired in a real estate crisis. I also read that they're doing, I think they're bringing charges against the, I forgot the company's name. Shouldn't even have brought it up. Go research what's going on in China. Uh, in the euro area, lending is contracting at a faster pace than in the um, nadir of the sovereign debt crisis. Nadir of this. I don't know what that word means. I'm going to have to look that up later. A sign that already stagnant growth is set to move lower. And then there's that government shutdown. A 45-day deal to keep the government open has kicked one risk from October into November, a point where it could end up doing more damage to the fourth quarter GDP numbers. Bloomberg Economics estimates that each week of shutdown takes about 0.2 percentage points off annualized GDP growth, which must, which most, with most, but not all of the re, that recouped once the government reopens. So you still end up down when the government shuts down and then reopens. So those are the six things that are signs that we are going into recession. And I think that we're going into recession. I think that we need one. I also think those auto union, those union auto workers should strike. Um, and so I don't have a problem with that, but so those things again are auto strike, student bills, oil spike, yield curve, global slump and government shutdown. We will be right back after these messages. One of the big things that I have been thinking about is getting much more efficient in all aspects of our business, the things that I am not doing uh, and need to be doing in my businesses. And it's unfortunately sucks because I've had to put in even more hours. Um, I'm up to probably on average about 70 to 80 hours a week. I'm trying to get it closer to 60 to 75 hours a week. And I think that, that would be good. Um, and, and I count things like this, like right now I'm essentially working. This isn't like super hard work for this. I spend in about 45 minutes getting CJV's podcast ready for the week. Um, but when I think about uh, all the, the stuff that I'm working towards, I've really tried to um, get it much more focused, much more manager friendly and uh, trying to become a, a better manager along with a better entrepreneur. And I think that people forget that those are two different categories of things. Um, uh, and there's even more, even a difference in being an executive to being a regular manager, to being an owner, to being a board member. 
And one of the things that we need, especially if we're going into a recession, uh, those are things that I look at on a regular basis, especially because um, our main business, 3T Warrior Academy, and a lot of our other businesses, you know, Age of Radio is hurt. Uh, advertising spend has been down for quite a while now, not only just um, for uh, the ads that we do, but just in general, uh, because those are the things that get pulled back a lot of the times. Ad spend when economies go. Um, a lot of a, a lot of podcast um, com- companies that do a lot of advertising through podcasts, they have higher requirements for their, you know, average per episode download that they they put the sponsorships on. And so so we know that the ad revenue piece has, has scaled back a little bit. And me knowing that is part of being a good manager and understanding our marketplace and understanding what we're doing. And I'm not saying that is like gloating because obviously there's lots of things that I could be doing better in all of these areas. But in that specific area, I'm trying to think about the the roles that we have and as you, as a business owner and or as an entrepreneur, you need to train yourself to be better as a CFO. You need to train yourself to be better as a um, chief marketing officer, as a salesperson um, in all aspects of the business. You should constantly be learning and educating and professional growing your education, whether you're the founder, whether you're a manager, whether you're a budding entrepreneur while you're working and you're doing a side hustle, whatever the case is, you have to understand business. Business and organizational structure are two of the most important things that you can understand in anything that you are doing and even government structure, depending on how you're running your business. All of that will help you become a better business person. But I, I've been thinking a lot about it. And the number one thing that a lot of people, the two most important things in my opinion, and I'm, I'll talk about this for most of my my career as far as making the business run. I'm not saying that these are the most important things in the... So I will say that they're the most important thing things when it comes to getting a business to work. I am not saying that they're the most important things that you need to have inside of the business to create something that then these two categories can do, right? So you have marketing and sales, which is super important. They have to have a really good product. That's why I'm saying like the product design and the, the business design is super important, but you have to have really strong marketing and advertising and salespeople on your staff because those are the people that go out and do make the money. And then the other role that is super, super important is the chief revenue officer. And so I've been thinking a lot about that because we need to have more revenue rock stars in all of my companies. Uh, and, and the reason why this is hitting me a lot is because CJV be, being the main social influencer for 3 War Academy, he is the catalyst of the revenue creator because of his reach and because of his growth. Um, and and because of his in his ingeniousness when it comes to getting the money to be made right and so that is what he is really really good at and that is something that i need to get better at one and it's also something we need to find other people to do inside of our organizations well so that they are also new revenue revenue generating people and so those are the things that i've been doing a lot of thinking about and so when i think about like the role of the person that needs to decide that that role for all of our organizations is essentially myself and CJB, right? And so if you don't know what chief revenue officer is or who I like to call the head revenue rock star of the company, it's essentially a recent, like over the last 10 or maybe 15 years, uh, it's an executive role that has started coming up inside of companies. And they're responsible for all revenue generation processes in an organization. So in this role, a, a chief revenue officer or revenue rock star is accountable for driving better integration and alignment between all revenue relating activities, including marketing, sales, customer customer support, pricing, and revenue management. So they look at the way in which your marketing goes and makes money, your sales goes and makes money, your customer support helps retain customers or cross sales, the pricing of the business and the revenue management of the company. Because if you are not managing revenue and bringing more revenue in and getting better at it, then you are going to fail as an entrepreneur's business. And as you start, it takes one, it takes a lot of work to get it going. And so in the beginning, you are going to be that revenue rock star. But you need to find other revenue rock stars as you're going. And that's something that I'm coming into with the business because because I do so many roles within our uh, all of our organizations. I w- am supposed to be the revenue rock star in Age of Radio, but I can't because my time is split up or the revenue rock star in Q Financial because my time is split up. And so th- my goal is to become the revenue rock star 
right? The, the main generating revenue for those two businesses. And then as I do that, become better as a chief revenue officer to create all of those align that alignment and integration between all those related things. And so that's something that you should really focus on. And this isn't this episode is not going to be talking about sales processes and things like that. It's going to be talking about the CRO and the responsibilities for all how they're the responsible for all the activities that generate revenue because you're responsible for all the activities that generate revenue. Just like I'm responsible for all the <laughs> activities that generate revenue. And so like with any corporate officer, the performance of the chief revenue officer, what we'll call CRO or the revenue rock star, must be evaluated to ensure maximum return to the company and its shareholders, or in this case, to the company and you or your company and your employees. Okay. And so you should have performance metrics on yourself to assess sales performance. That's the number one thing, right? You have to have some types of sales strategies and tactics that should aim to sell each product or service to the most valuable segment with a focus on generating the most revenue possible. So your number one metric that you need to have is sales performance and you have to have sales metrics and goals. And so a lot of the times when we're looking at sales metrics and goals, and we won't go deep into it because this isn't about sales. This is about an overview of the chief revenue officer. But as we look and think about this, like you need to, you, excuse me. So you need to have some type of activity that you do. So for instance, like I'm trying to go after at least 20 people a week for ads for age of radio. And that's nothing. If I could get 20 to 50 a day going out, that'd be great. And I'm not even getting anywhere near 20 a week out, but that's my goal. So every week I constantly think about that. Who are the 20 people that I've, who are the new 20 people that I've contacted and who are some of the old people that I've contacted and making that a regular thing to show them our, you know, portfolio of podcasts, the downloads that we get, how to sell across the entire thing, the dynamic ads that we can produce inside of that. And so I am constantly, constantly every week trying to somehow get 20 emails or 20 calls or something out. And that's the performance metric that I'm focusing on right now. And a lot of the times we want to say, let's get to a hundred thousand, let's get to 200,000. But the activities are the things that you want for that sales performance part of it. And then you want that overall number. Okay. So that's the first thing. Second thing is there has to be product creation. So um, micro markets should be properly identified in segments with products created or defined for each. So what that means essentially is that you should understand what your product is now, how you're selling it, and what some of the products that you're coming down the pipeline to sell to people or to offer to people to be able to do what you know, to be able to sell what the sales team needs to sell or you need to sell because you are going to be the main revenue driver. It's just you. And then you need to look at pricing strategies. So pricing strategies or prices for each product should correlate with each micro market's perceived value of that product and ensure product availability is restricted to the micro market that generates the highest return. And so essentially what that's saying is, so you have these like micro markets that you go after and you sell those products for, and then the pricing of whatever it is needs to make sense for that micro market that that product or service is designed for. So essentially what that's meaning is you need to have sales performance, you need to have the right product to the right market, and then you need to have the right pricing for the people, the pricing for that product in that market. And when you get that, then it's going to be easy to go there and sell and create the performance that you need. Okay. Then you need pricing execution. So a firm must have tools and processes for determining optimal prices that align the product value with specific market segments. So essentially, you need to have um, uh, a way to determine those optimal prices to make sure that the market is aligned with the product that's aligned with the price. So you need to build in something that allows you to determine and recognize if that is the right thing for the right market at the right price and the right product. Um, and we're not going to go into each of these individually. I'm just giving you kind of an overview because these are the things that you need to look at yourself and say, am I doing these things? And if I'm doing these things, how well am I doing them? And how can I make these my performance metrics? And then you need to look at advertising and promotion effectiveness. So I'm talking to some guy on Discord right now. Um, there's lots of ways for advertising and promotion to go, but essentially 
Uh, the reason why I brought the guy up on TikTok is because he showed me a TikTok and then we talked about some of the ads that he did in the past. I helped him figure out how to do the social media marketing piece and then how to, and then recommended how to do like the ads on Google search and meta, or at least to go towards them, right? To learn how to do them. And so you have to have a, a, as, a as a revenue rock star or as a chief revenue officer, which should be you for your business, you need to be able to look and see how are you utilizing social media marketing? Is there a good value proposition in that? along with a call to action. So is there content that you're generating for the social media platforms that aren't just advertising specifically, but their content that then gets a buy-in or gets a lead to get an email. And then you have email campaigns set up one. And then are there ads that you can advertise where people can put in, you know, an email? Because when you get that email list, then you can start, you know, creating email campaigns to go back after those people. And so you need to make sure that you have the, that advertising and that piece of everything built really, really well. And essentially the way that most of that works is you have an ad or social media marketing that gets generates some type of lead magnet to acquire leads. And then you start going after those leads, right? To get them, or you can buy leads, or you can go to LinkedIn to get leads. There's all kinds of different ways to get leads, um, depending on your specific industry. So you need to make sure that you understand that as best as you can, because that's going to help you figure out how and where to go get the leads to start marketing and going after the people that you want. And then you also have to realize, you know, if you're business to business or if you're business to consumer, because that's going to depend on the type of lead magnet you're going to use, obviously, and some of the best ways to get those leads for your business. And so once you do that, then you need to make sure that you're tracking those metrics. Like, so that's something that I do horribly in age of radio specifically that I'm, that I'm really focusing on creating a really strong dashboard for age of Jeremy and age of radio to make sure that my brand specifically is moving forward because I'm the authority in this space. Right. And, and I have lots of other aspirations that go along with this. And then two, how are we looking at those on a regular basis for all of our new consolidated businesses, specifically age of radio, three, two, where Academy's kind of worked out. We need to get better at some stuff. Um, but age of radio specific, also hardcore and then Q financial, um, and then getting the people in place to do the things that we need to do to get what we need done. Um, advertise, um, and then, um, let's see here. They talk about distribution effectiveness. All possible channels must be evaluated. I, uh, that's going to be, I wouldn't worry too much about that right now. So like if you're the only CRO, the sales performance, the product creation, the pro pricing strategies and the pricing edu execution and advertising and promotion effectiveness need to be like the core of the things that you rate, how well you're doing on something. Um, and then as you get and then as you start getting customers, I would say the next thing is customer satisfaction. So if you can figure out a way to create a good, strong customer satisfaction, because that's something that I'm doing right now um, with Age of Radio, um, we've created our uh, Facebook group for our podcast hosts. So if you're a podcast host, this is the only Facebook group that you get. You get a special channel inside of our Discord. We have a special um, sales email. We have a special um, uh, accounts payable email to make sure that all of this stuff is going out to everyone effectively and properly. Um, and so then you need to get a good feedback loop to ensure that the customer is satisfied, which is my next step um, as we go through some of this customer rehashing through Age of Radio. And then also, too, as we build all of the customer satisfaction stuff for Merlin, which I'm head of in, in that as well. Um, and that's why I um, work all the time, because we have so much stuff going on. But the good news is uh, it will pay off and the re we will reap the wealth and the reward and that wealth and reward will go back in to creating a better society for humanity, supposedly. That's the plan anyway. Um, so as a chief revenue officer, you need to realize that, or as a revenue rock star, as I like to say, you need to make sure that you measure yourself on sales performance. You measure yourself on product creation, pricing strategies, and pricing execution, which are all one grouping, right? And then you want to focus on advertising and promotion effectiveness, and then customer satisfaction. And if you do those things and you have metrics to manage those above everything else, because those are the things that are going to cr create the revenue, and that's what's the most important is the revenue creating things. I It, it frustrates me all the time because we have our business essential group. And I talk to a lot of business people. We have our generational shifters. People pay me a lot of money to coach with them. Um, 
uh, in our generational shifter program. So if you're interested in that, we will be opening that up this week. You can coach with myself, CJV and May specifically. Um, uh, I do the business stuff, May does the human design stuff and CJV does, um, the motivation spiritual and then some of the business stuff as well. And so point being is that, is that it frustrates me all the time because people try to plan and plan and plan and plan and plan. But the most, the only thing that matters in a business at the beginning and really at all of it is whether or not it's making revenue. As long as you're making revenue, then you just need to get better at, make, at, at managing your expenses. But what happens is the, 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 the companies, as they get bigger and bigger, they, for some reason, forget that they need to continue to make revenue. And so they uh, just start cutting expenses and they don't think about innovating and creating revenue and that's where a lot of this comes and that's why it's so important to see that product creation like that chief revenue officer that revenue rock star the main revenue rock star the chief revenue officer he needs to go and make sure that these products are being pushed and made and everything's going along those lines and it's a fantastic role because that is the heart of getting a business to move there's all other kinds of stuff in it i'm not saying that the other roles aren't important but i'm saying that that revenue officer is what makes it specifically move. Uh, so the last thing that I want to talk about here is the C uh, uh, revenue rock star, the chief revenue officer or revenue head revenue rock stars profile. Um, and so there are a few key personal and professional attributes that define a successful chief revenue officer or chief revenue rock star, as I like to call it. And so they need to be results oriented. And so that's something that I have, Oh my fucking God, I suck at is that, um, I is because we I just get I've noticed that I've just been entrapped in doing shit for fucking everybody that I keep forgetting about being resolved. Like I want things to get done and I want things to be successful. I want them to be beneficial. Like we have to you have to be results oriented. And that is one of the main things that I'm getting back to. Um, in my, in this next decade is being in, in by decade. I mean, I'm not saying that it's going to be like at the end of the decade, I'm going to be good at it. It's like that main focal point that the people that are in, we need to have results oriented people in our organizations. Um, because we have been giving fucking jobs, excuse me, we've been giving job. I shouldn't be swearing. We have been giving jobs to so many people because they're helping us and they deserve it and they hands down do. But most of these jobs that we have are like support roles. We need and and those support roles don't have the results oriented mindset that I think that we need to have. And that is something that I'm really trying to get back to in at least the Q consolidated organizational structure. Um they need to be a market maker. So a chief revenue officer works usually closely with an executive team. In this case, it's just going to be you specifically. And you need to be able to craft and communicate the company's vision and then transform that vision into a long-term strategy for pioneering new markets and new opportunities. And then you also need to take that and you need to lead from the front. So a revenue rock star officer or a chief revenue officer must be able to see and clearly communicate the company's vision, and the revenue strategy across all relevant functions and ensure the right goals are defined and met. And then I know that this might frustrate a lot of people, but if you get really good education and business acumen, you can get a lot of great business acumen from doing. I'm not saying that, but you can also get a ridiculous amount of business acumen from getting an MBA because essentially the way that an MBA is designed or uh, um, a um, master's of business administration is you just do you just look at business problems and business coursework, and then you look to see what you would have done differently. And, and, and then you compare it to what the actual business did. And so you're doing a lot of casework and a lot of case studies that kind of rep or reflect what would happen in real case situations and real case scenarios. Um, and then if you couple that with experience, then you're going to go really, really far. Uh, and so I, I think that one of the reasons why we or 3T Warrior Academy has been able to survive some of our difficult times is because of my business acumen and because of CJV's business acumen. We both have business administration degrees. I have a master's, he has a bachelor's, and he also has a degree in banking. So there is something that can be said for that type of education when you are in, you know, in the middle of it or in the business. 
And so the other thing that you want to look for in yourself and and pull out of yourself is become data driven. So the right chief revenue officer creates a culture of accountability to yourself, right? And to others by setting the right metrics and and tying company performance, compensation, and promotions to tangible results. And so that's something that we need to get better with here at 32 Order Academy um, and at Q Consolidated across all of our businesses um, and with Age of Radio and Q Financial because, you know, we're moving into the next level and that is going to be ridiculous amounts of a growth. uh, And and I want to see that growth, you know, do amazing uh, and and the only way that we're going to be able to do that is to look at the data, reflect on that data, and then create plans with that data. And being able to tie that data into performance is just something that is going to have to happen. Um, and then the the best chief revenue officers, they understand and embrace the difference between marketing sales, while at the same time establishing processes to, to ensure their coordination across the full revenue cycle to ensure the greatest revenue growth possible. So I also encourage you to get really good at marketing and sales wherever you're at in your entrepreneur journey, because those are the things that are going to take your revenue to the next level, along with the things that I mentioned here. So when you're when you're thinking about what you need to pull out of yourself, right, for what how you need to be like this is and then I'm talking to myself here, right? Well, you need to be results oriented. You need to create markets. You need to be leading from the front. You need to have really strong business acumen. You need to be data driven, metric driven, and then you need to be a wise arbiter. Uh, and so with that, like I always say, Namo Mirabutsu, be thankful, grateful, and kind. And we will talk with you next time. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to The Age of Jeremy. If you could rate this podcast wherever you get your podcasts, I will really, really appreciate it. Uh, And if you subscribe to this podcast, you can get it delivered to you right when it comes out. And also you can find us on YouTube at Age of Jeremy. The beginning song was Brave Faces Everyone by Spanish Love Songs. The closing song was Threatening Each Other Recapitalism by by Illuminati Hotties. I use Neumann microphones. I record through a Zoom L8 onto Steinberg's Cubase, and I use Waves plugins. And one last time, Namo Amida Busu. Remember, be thankful, grateful, and kind.